with Facebook because we were talking about this yesterday. Do you do you upload the exact same video, or do you do a, a different version or a modified version or what? Um, you don't really know that question. Okay, she asked if when they upload to Facebook and YouTube, if they upload the exact same video or do a variation on the video for different platforms. Um, it's a good question. Um, I think it, it kind of depends what your goals are, but for us, um, we've uploaded, we kind of wait, we stagger um, if we're going to upload on Facebook. Um, when We upload our whole video, um, and it does really well, um, but what we do is we kind of, we... We, we don't make it the high definition version. It's kind of a smaller res version. So, you know, you still want to kind of, you're still encouraged to go to the YouTube channel itself and go to that port platform to watch the video. Um, we've also made teasers. Um, it it kind of just depends what your goal is and what you, what trying to plat what platform you're trying to build. If you're trying to build your Facebook, definitely upload full videos to Facebook. If you're trying to build your YouTube, I think also it's kind of just trial and error. You don't want to make any money directly, but I mean, it's kind of a question of, okay, well, if I get 10 million views on this video and how many of those people are going to translate to subscribers on my YouTube channel um, and ultimately add clicks or they're going to buy a shirt or So you whatever. always put a link, but Facebook doesn't vary it? This is what I don't understand. Um, yeah, you could put a link. Uh, um, actually, I heard word, I've actually been hearing word for the past year that Facebook was going to monetize. I've been hearing that for a long time. I don't know if yeah, that's actually true. Some you know anything about that? A few people. I think they Maybe. say they're going to, so we say that. Yeah, so that we say, yeah. Facebook's <laughs> yeah. monetizing. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. For, for, for Facebook burying links, though, if you can use a, um, a like a URL shortener, oh. uh, sorry. If if you can use a URL shortener that kind of disguises the link, because YouTube and Facebook hate each other. And they will bury your stuff, and they won't. You won't get the, near the engagement. But you can use like um, URL shorteners. I understand to not let Facebook know that it's going to YouTube. <laughs> so, I guess I opens up a question, which is like different like ways to make to make revenue on like on videos. Do you guys find like YouTube AdSense is a significant thing for you? Is it like is it brand deals? Is it so sort of the other sides of your business that benefit from the exposure of, like, what do you find? It's tax season, so I'm just going to audit you. But uh, you guys, like, for us, we have uh, we've had Geico as a title sponsor on the Convo Show for the last few seasons. So that's been like, it kind of just given us a production budget. So you're making a lot. Like, if you if you go into YouTube, you can kind of see like which videos are like your top ten making money, and a lot of them are old old videos. Yeah, yeah. And like the ones that are like the most watched, I'm not making any money off of because the parodies, they claim them all now. So don't do parody. Oh, it's such a nightmare. But for me, it's just AdSense and just, again, being consistent. And then if you score a brand deal, I mean, that's a nice chunk of change to kind of, yeah. you know. Bridge that. Yeah. Bridge finance that. But yeah. again, if you want yeah, to do a brand deal. That's an MRS. It's a multiple revenue stream. Bradley, do you, I was going to ask you, do you, your, your helicopter, is that, that's like another a separate business? Uh, no, uh, or, I, I got my license when I was 18. I thought I was going to be a commercial helicopter pilot. Everybody laughed at me and said, come back when you're 35. So I got into other businesses, and I was lucky enough to get into a plastic business. I was the king of asswipe and sold toilet paper dispensers. Um, sold that business and then got back into flying recreationally and then just started making videos. And I've actually never monetized until I got a piece of equipment stolen recently, and I'm like, damn it. This is getting really expensive, so I actually just turned on monetization like a week ago, finally. Um, but uh, I don't know really what's going to be the source. Um, I think that I've picked up a major sponsor, uh, but I still don't know what's going on until like two weeks from now. I've already shot everything. I haven't signed. I have no idea what's going on. So money has never been something that uh, I've made on YouTube or anywhere. <laughs> But people are like, you have a helicopter. You're like, you're like, just you just collect like, like coolness, cool points for having a helicopter. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> That's the internet. That's the internet. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. More questions? Hold on, we'll come back. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's been mentioned kind of briefly by uh, a bunch of you, but what kind of behind-the-scenes support do you guys have as far as like extra video editors, extra 
uh, you know, people that are on set with you, or uh, even if you're, you know, having somebody else manage your ad sets, manage your uh, brands, what kind of support do you guys have the, uh, behind the scenes for your channels? I'll start because I have the only microphone. Um, Matt mentioned earlier, but it's really it's it's me, him, and, and two other guys who kind of create the content, edit, uh, do a lot of the production work on set. We'll bring on other people for sure, other videographers, um, assistants. There's just our productions are getting bigger. Lights need to be set up, and boom boom poles need to be held. Um, but the core group is just us four, and we kind of like it like that. We we get a lot of we were, we were able to control our content and edit it and, and really put our own personal stamp on it. Definitely hold us, holds us back though. Um, to Because our content, it's not really, the way we're making it right now, it's not, not quite the content that you can make every week. You can't pump it out two videos a week. So if we had extra editors um, or whatever, different people on our team, it would definitely improve our consistency, but we just haven't quite reached that point yet. But at this point, it's a very uh, small, tight-knit group. Um, for a production, um, I have a videographer who does help me. So he comes in once a week and helps me film two videos a week. So we film two videos in a day and then he edits them. Um, I just didn't start using him until this year, so I was making everything myself, uh, filming, editing, lighting, everything up until this January. So, yeah. Uh, same for me for. Uh, most of the time, I was doing everything by myself and hoping it was in focus. Uh, and now I have, since I became more consistent, I have an editor, no joke, in Texas that I've never met before. He's probably seen every body part that he's had to blur out. I mean, I've never met him, which is terrifying. And he knows, like, the deep, dark parts of me. Um, but he edits for me, and then I'll send it, I'll give notes, and then he'll upload for me, which makes it so much easier. If you can do that, it'll help you stay consistent. And it's just changing. He was like a referral from a friend who was from Texas, and so I just, you know, I, it's creepy. How do you get it's like a weird blind date. What's your workflow? How do you send him? I, uh, I export my from like Final Cut, and then I send it via WeTransfer, and I'll usually do like a whole week in advance since I'm here. I like did a whole week, and then he'll send me. Uh, he'll upload it unlisted, and I, you know, check it and then give notes and give ideas for thumbnails. So now we have this like really nice relationship and I've never met him. It's very bizarre. And that's the internet. <laughs> it's like, have you had like meetings that are set up by artificial intelligent uh, assistants? Have you encountered this? No. So there was like, I had this meeting and the assistant like set it up. And Amy was her name. And we were like going back and forth with times and everything like that. And then I noticed finally at the end, it was like, uh, at the bottom of the email, I was like, uh, this is an AI assistant system or something. I was like, I've just been talking to a robot. For, and she was having a cop like, referencing, uh, like, w like, just sentences, and, like, I was like, oh, let's see what David says, and she was like, well, when David gets back to you, let me know. And, she sounds like <laughs> Yeah, it was, well, I mean, if you're into that, you know, kind of like a, like a Black Mirror sort of way. Um, but maybe he's a robot. There's I kind of want to make like here. a little video where I go and like knock on his door and I'm like, I'm here. Yeah, what awesome. if he's like super creepy? What if he has pictures of me everywhere? And that's my fear. Like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I've had to apologize before being like, I'm sorry, you couldn't. And he like doesn't acknowledge the fact that I was like, can you blur out my, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's creepy. He's just like, it's okay. Yeah. Is he here? Like, what if, come on in. Come on out. It's really creepy. So that's how I do the internet. Yeah. Bradley, are you from Texas? Yeah. So, um, so I got this picture. Um, uh, my guy, I met, I got an editor and filmer that helps me. Uh, I met him at uh, Parlor. He came up and said, hey, you're that guy on Instagram. And he said, I have a drone. I said, I need a drone guy tomorrow. And so he showed up with like a bunch of dead batteries on his drone. He has the shocker, so I should probably don't. <laughs> uh, and um, so he helps me. He does weddings. He does other stuff. Um, he, we don't have like a formal relationship in terms of like, I don't pay him. Um, he uses a desk. Shock up! Shock up! <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of we're building towards like I don't know. We just have the same vision of um, we think the brands are going to come and they're started to and um, so yeah, we're just kind of working forward um, as, as a shared vision. And we've got some other channels coming and some other things that we're going to do. Destruction by gravity. We're going to drop shit out of the helicopter. Awesome. Kind of fun. Awesome.
that's going to be so great. It's awesome. I think that's about, I think you're in like the best spot. I don't know. Helicopter YouTube videos are not someone, something yeah. that everyone can do. Yeah. They're just drones. They're just like, oh, Best Buy drones. They're, you're like actual chop. I just crashed right. my drone, so I'm not really that great. So. <laughs> Have you flown the drone while flying the helicopter? No. That seems like a, you could, though, like a right? violation of some sort of aviation rules. Yes. It was mentioned in the Juniper thing about uh, influencer marketing and that's on the rise and you guys have said that if you're lucky enough to get a brand. On that note, how do you go about pricing yourself for those sorts of brands? Uh, well, that's always hard. It's always hard. Um, I think, it, I, I don't know, it's really important to understand your value and not undervalue yourself. Um, and. Another thing is that, in my experience, um, a lot of these brands are willing to give out a lot of money for things that are very simple. Not to say that we've <laughs> got a lot of money for doing things that are very simple, but there's, there's, there's a lot of money being thrown around. I mean, a lot of these brands are making, are making the transition from traditional advertising media to um, digital. And in terms of actually pricing ourselves, I mean, for us, it's like we make, we put, we, we have to make full budgets because we're doing production. So we do like day to day, we do day rates, we do it, we calculate everything. But that's, because we're like on like, we're trying to achieve actual sets when we film our videos. But in terms of like, well, maybe, maybe a beauty guru would have a better sense of how to, do you have a rate card or something like that? <laughs> no, I don't have a rate card. <laughs> um, so I think in beauty, it's really important to have uh, a media kit so it's kind of like a little bio of what you do and how many subscribers views and stuff that you have so it's like an info card for yourself um, regarding rating yourself uh, for pricing I think it's it is really tough and everyone is different and not all brands are going to look at your subscribers and say oh she has a million we're gonna pay her so and so amount it's not like that it, it, it goes down to engagement it goes down to commenting it goes down to every single aspect of your channel but there is a platform called Social Blue Book. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Um, it's a really good place to go and kind of take a look and see where you're at. It's not necessarily right. Um, I find in my niche with other beauty YouTubers that I've talked to, it's actually a little bit lower, lower than what we would normally charge. But for someone maybe in comedy or something else, it could be different. I'm not sure, but it's a good starting point. So check that out if you haven't. What was the name? Social Blue Book. I think a valuable piece of advice that I got was to break down everything that you can and provide options because if you if people just want to know why they're paying, what they're actually paying for. So if you can break down, give options, they might like I've heard I've heard of friends making deals that are ridiculous because they add in option C. That's they're like they'll never choose option C, and then they choose option C, and they're like holy smokes, I can't believe it. So having those options and giving your employer or whatever the brand just you know, the ability to choose. Good idea. What would the options be? Like the options. <laughs> options would be. The options would be. Well, that's kind of where you, you, you kind of got to get a little creative. Right. Um, um, it could be, you know, whether you're gonna, where you're gonna post the video, where it's gonna be hosted, uh, if you're gonna do this many social posts, this many tweets. You could. I, people charge, you know, like two hundred dollars a tweet, hundred thousand dollars a tweet. Depends how, depends how big you are, but. Um, I mean, on the internet, I mean, you can pretty much put a price on anything if you're in control of it. If you're the one pressing, click publish, whatever, you can put a price on it if you wish. Yeah. You know, it's just it's in the end, it's just negotiation. It still feels a bit like the wild west, doesn't it? I, I I feel like it's getting a bit more like as more deals happen and like I think agents do more deals that becomes a bit more consistency. I think, but it still feels like. You can kind of throw out a number, and they could say yes or no, and you can. Um, I mean, how do you guys go about go about that? Uh, I think a lot of it's like confidence, like you were saying, sort of just like this is what I'm worth, and honestly, you are worth that. You've built this this following of people that you know these products would die to have those many people get eyes on this. Like it's. Think about a commercial, for instance. Commercials are very, very, very expensive to produce for a quick thing. 
So the amount of money you're asking for is such a small portion compared to what a traditional push for a product would be that for a lot of these companies, it's like, oh yeah, no big deal. Again, there's a lot of startup companies that it's not the case and what they want to do is they uh, will say, okay, well, based on how many views you get, we'll give you this many, or based on how much you sell, we'll give you that. And um, maybe some, I think beauty gurus might have a consumer audience. I think for comedians, a lot of our audience are consumers. So to me, I always pass on those because I just don't know how that's gonna fare. Um, so I think it's like knowing your audience and what they're willing to spend money on and uh, and just being confident, they can always say no, or they can always say, yeah, well, we only have this much. Or sometimes they'll say, what budget are you working with? Before I even throw it out, because what if their budget is bigger than what you're asking for? You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, I'm super interested. I think this is a great, this will be a great partnership. What kind of budget are you working with? You know, so it's a little, bit, it's a business. It is a crazy thing. There still feels like a discrepancy, because like what you were saying, I think is exactly right. Like a, a television commercial or something, or one of these traditional things, which are, hundreds and hundreds of thousand of dollars on the low end, up to millions. Um, and you play them on television, which is also a huge amount to, to buy that ad space. And then maybe the guy goes, maybe people go to the bathroom where they change the channel when it comes on, or they skip the ad beforehand. But if it's like, if someone's watching your video, um, they're actually watching it. Like you can, those are actual like engagements. And especially like, like, uh, like Jen, like if you're like, if I'm watching and I'm a fan of your video and you recommend something, like a product or something, that's just worth so much more to me. That's like my friend telling me, like, because if Matt tells me to go see a movie, I'm pro I'll go see it because I was Jason, I probably won't. But if Matt tells me to go see it, uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I respect him. He has, like, I like his taste. We have similar, like, ideas and tastes, so I'm totally going to see that. That's worth way more than me seeing, like, a, a trailer or a commercial or something. My, uh, the only thing that I've ever really sold is um, I sold a piece of footage to Molson's, like a clip. I built a rink on top of a mountain and they turned that into um, an ad a national ad campaign. Um, I licensed them this clip of footage for $10,000 and that was great, like that's awesome. It cost me a couple thousand dollars to do it. Um, they went and spent, uh, they actually invited me to come be in the commercial and I got to skate on top of the mountain. And they said at one point, guys, we're really sorry we're yelling at you, but this is costing $187,000 an hour to film. And they had 70 people on top of the mountain. They had um, helicopter everybody up there. And so, you know, $10,000, I was like, this is awesome, right? And that's when I actually realized I needed to start a channel. I didn't have a YouTube channel at that point. I thought, wow, if I had a million subscribers, how much would Molson pay me to host a game, that, a rink I can build for a couple thousand dollars? Um, so I don't really know how to value myself, and I've had like a, a lot of tire kicking companies, like major companies. Um, one company wanted me to fly across Canada for Canada's 150th birthday. I don't know how to value that. I, I it's the craziest thing. Um, all you can kind of do is like kind of let them start. <laughs> you know, like what is your budget? And go I think from there. too, like like talking to each other, like as as you like, because Matt, you and Jason, and I, we've had like and shared deals that we've done with other companies, I feel that gives uh, the creator a bit more power when you have an idea of what like what comparable things are going for or what things, because a lot of times the brand who is working with people, they know what the deals are, you know, they know what they, and you kind of feel in the dark a lot of times, so yeah, it can be a tough one. Uh, yes. Hi. So my question is for everyone on the panel. Um, so it's a two-part question. The first question is, as far as when your channel started to take off, would it be because of consistency, because of tags, or because of collaborations? And then the second part of that is, are you still finding that tags are very important, or are there, is there a better way to reach new people? I have no idea, because all I do is lose subscribers every time I put up videos, so I don't know <laughs> if tags are good or not. Uh, I can say that the only thing that, again, has has gotten me a single subscriber is um, um, collaborations. Um, and some I've worked with guys with 4.2 million. I did a video with Destin, and I got maybe 2,000, 3,000 subscribers out of it. I did something with um, Mr. Syndicate, it was 2 million, and I got 50,000. I did something with Casey, I got 100,000. Um, I did something with Ewan Olsen that has 60, 600,000, I got 3,000, 4,000. 
So I mean, it's all over the place. It, um, there's no consistency to it. Um, and I be saying that that collaborations are a great way to grow. One of the things is when you're approaching people, um, I get a lot of people saying, "Hey, take me flying. I'd like to do a video." And it's like you have to think of it like a job interview when you're pitching somebody on a collaboration. You got to say like, "Here's why I would be good for you, and here's how you would benefit." Also, you know, it can't be a one-sided street. And so, and that's kind of a <laughs> that's that in a nutshell. I don't know much about like the YouTube intricacies as far as you I feel like you guys probably know better tags and things like that but what I have learned just by having friends who are pretty successful is um, fucking clickbait y'all the way you title your videos the way you make your thumbnails and following all those trends because they change you know guys know like the way the thumbnails looked 10 years ago are very different than they are today, even a year ago, and the way things are titled and things like that. So I don't know so much about tags, but definitely just being, um, trying to be as topical with your title, your, I need a drink. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I just like, like yeah. boobs, just tag everything with boobs. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, to answer your first question, when it took off, uh, I think that I don't know if we had have had like that moment where it took off, but because we kind of, or, like I said, we're in a different world where we try to make these viral videos. We've had many moments throughout our like YouTube career where it's like, holy crap, it's taking off. Um, so, to answer your question, tags very important. I think um, <laughs> very very important because when it comes down to it. it it is an algorithm. You are trying to get. You are trying to find your way into this world of keywords and what's popping up on your screen and real related searches. And you know, there's all sorts of different things. That you, as you do this, you learn all sorts of little things um, from other creators, from people at YouTube. Like you know, one thing off the top of my head is that the top five tags. And you, you're you're allowed to get like 50, do like 50 tags. The top five have the most weight. Um, in your title, you have to. You should be. Um, incorporating your tags, your first five tags into your title. Because in the end, uh, for example, um, we're trying to build a second channel right now um, that is uh, about our mountain biking lifestyle. And uh, we're trying to vlog it and do something new. And there's no one out there really that's creating mountain bike vlogs. But what we want to do is, as well as um, do something we're passionate about, is exploit um, these new terms that are being searched up. So if someone's searching mountain biking North Vancouver, um, what's gonna pop up? It might, our, our video might pop up because we have a base amount of subscribers, we have, um, we already have views, so it's gonna be high up in that, in that list. Um, but like for our main channel, I don't know how important tags are, would you say like for like 90s game or like? I think tags are just one piece of the puzzle, right? It's all the metadata, like thumbnails, like titles, like like the tags, like the description. It's it it all kind of helps together. Um, like you're saying, though, for our main channel, I think it's the, it's the content that really speaks more more so than anything. It's the video we, we you know we cater these videos so the 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 um, viewers hooked within they should be hooked within the first ten seconds. They or you know we're all pretty sporadic people here, and if you're not interested in the first 10 seconds of it, you're like, ah, it's not worth my time. And uh, so it's just like, I guess to answer the question, it's a multitude of things. Jay, how, how important is like all that micro data or whatever it's called? In there? I, I found it really important uh, up until like about seven months ago, my channel actually just started to grow rapidly, and I wasn't really sure why. I kind of sat down and I brainstormed, like, what are people doing, and why are they growing so fast? And uh, researching people that are in my niche, obviously. And then I looked at everything, like the guys are saying, the thumbnails, um, description, tags, those are all really important. It's like a harmonious circle that you need. You need everything. You can't just use a tag or have a description. You need to have everything. And so about six months ago, I started changing my thumbnails dramatically. Um, I don't want to say it's clickbait, but you do need to have a little bit of incentive for a viewer to click on it, because if they don't click on it, they'll never see your video. Um, so I would say just have everything, and if you can have it all work out, then you're good to go. Um, maybe one last question. So do you use red circles? Yeah. And an arrow saying you 
Because <laughs> that's clickbait. <laughs> Hello, I, I have a question as an actor, and um, as I'm sure a lot of us have many talents, and as, as, a, as we're trying to get our, ourselves out there, um, what, well, I guess um, it's, it makes sense that everybody here, most, most of us have a lot of, you guys up there have a strict niche that um, it brings you success, but um, maybe matter, you, know, you guys have a, maybe a, a way of expressing this better, but um, when, you're, when you're trying to build your, your I mean, if you're trying to showcase like music or like your acting or improv stuff or like, what, what's the best way, I guess, to like decide on how to do like showcase all of your unique skills? Um, I guess I can leave it at that. Yeah. I can say on our channel, we, we've been doing it a long time and there's different videos, you know, we showed like our um, sample Vancouver video where we wanted to show our skills in music production and editing as well as you know videography but you know it the beautiful thing about YouTube is that you can do whatever you want you can the create creativity is up to you I've done a lot of things I've done a lot of commercial work for brands um, and I always come back to YouTube because I'm my own boss so I get to make the decisions you know I don't have to make three revisions for the client I just do whatever I want and so, I mean, you can do whatever you want and you can experiment. There's no limits. I think that's a great thing, like experiment. Like there's, there's nothing to say that your first like video or first 50 videos have to be any good, let alone successful, you know? It, it's really this uh, great thing that you can just kind of mess around with and find your voice and kind of find that niche and kind of find what works and there is like these, yeah, this immediate feedback with your audience that can tell you what they're enjoying or what they're not, and you can kind of compare that to what you like doing and, and what you want to do and, and what you don't want to do. And, um, and I think there's a lot of examples. I mean, like our video, our Convo's video, the first video took off right away. It kind of had a viral thing, but we've been making really crappy videos for years before that. Um, and some of them were on YouTube and some of them just, most of them just never got finished. Uh, but it was just like that process of doing that actually you get better you get a bit better you get like a bit You get closer to what you want to make you know You have this like vision when you start of what you want like what you want to do what you want to make and then you try and make it And then you're like way down here. And you're like, how do I why am I so crappy? Um, but you just kind of keep sucking for a while and then you slowly kind of make your way eventually to out of the suck and into the good <laughs> It's also pretty cool to see people's skills evolve. You know, they start YouTube because they want to sing, or they start YouTube because they want to make music or whatever. And somewhere down the road, they're like, "Oh man!" Uh, they watch a video and then they get really inspired. They're like, "This looks so great! How do I make it look like that?" I look in the description. Oh, okay, I gotta buy this camera. I gotta buy this camera. And then they work on their filmmaking skills. They work on their video skills, editing skills. And like, there's so many, uh, so many YouTubers that you, you know you track over the years, and they just improve in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we have to wrap it up, but I think we're going to do, there's going to be like a little meet and greet. What's that? We've done? Okay, let's do one more question. And you already had a question. I have a very quick question. Okay, hold, hold on, we'll come, okay, yeah, yes yeah, sir. Because you guys have an audience now, have you guys thought of um, crowdsourcing based um, monetization like uh, Patreon or something like that? What do you guys think about that? Patreon? Crowdsourcing or, um... uh, for me, Patreon, I just think it's really bad optics being a guy with a helicopter and then asking for money. Uh, so, <laughs> not an option for me. <laughs> We've been talking about that. Okay, so Patreon is a website that you can. Uh, you want this? Yeah, we've done some stuff on Patreon a little bit. It's basically like a Kickstarter, but on an ongoing base. So people your fans can, pay you monthly. Yeah, they can become your patrons, or monthly, or, or per video. Or per video, right. Yeah. And, you, and they get rewards. So um, we've been talking about that more and more, um, because we've been seeing a lot of success. Um, so some of our favorite YouTubers, we've seen that they get like up to $25,000 a month uh, from their fans. Whether that's like, 20, I don't know how many people that is, they have a big audience, this particular uh, channel, but uh, we've been talking about it more and more because um, you can get really creative with your rewards. So you can offer people 
like for our, we have a merch store and we have clothing, whatnot. We can, you know, we could say you donate this much and you actually get like a hard good, or you can say you um, you donate this much. Is it donate? Is it donate or support? I guess donate sounds kind of weird. Yeah, donate sounds like your charity. I guess the whole thing is kind of weird. People, like that's why we haven't really done yeah. it. Yet. I think they, did, I think they're they're setting it up like like um like to be a patron like like patreon it's like a patron of the arts so like when you find someone that you're like uh uh like a big fan of or something you can kind of like you know buy just two dollars a month or twenty dollars a month or fifty cents a month or whatever the options you can like kind of like be a contributor to the success of them and get kind of extra extra awards i think it can be a good idea it's it's a weird it's a hard it's like you have to mess it like bradley i think that's just exactly what you said like the messaging of it, like the optics of it, have to be for it to be effective. Have to be. I think it has smart. to come up off as authentic. Yeah. It actually has to make sense. Or how about like just even Kickstarter? Like, have you done anything like that? No. I feel passionately about not doing that. Oh, go, go. Not on. doing what? Not doing any of those. Okay, go. Like it angers me. I just feel like um, it's such a blessing that this is even a job. So that people are watching the videos and you're making money from YouTube and AdSense that I I have a really hard time asking this wonderful community who a lot of these are kids who don't have money or people who are looking for an outlet and somewhere to watch and get away for a little bit to ask them for money to me feels like stealing like I, I'm uncomfortable with even doing VidCon I think it's if you guys are aware of what VidCon is, it's like, you know, a big conference where these kids have to pay over a hundred dollars to come meet me, give me a break. Like that to me is like, it's stealing and it, I, I don't feel comfortable with it. I'd rather, you know, go to ABC, pitch an idea, get money to do my passion project. And I make sure that the kids don't have to pay to watch it. And then we all went and that was built on being a community like this, wonderful thing and like I just I feel passionate about it. I think so are you saying that, that that signed 8x10 glossy of you that I bought off eBay was <laughs> not directly from you? That's my mom's business and I don't, you know, I can't come out about that. I knew something was up. <laughs> but um, I need to each their own, I don't mean it like. No, it's great. It's not stealing, I don't know. It depends I just on the rewards that you can give. I mean, because you can actually, like they can, you know, I, know, I see a lot of YouTubers, they um, in exchange for it. Two, to two bucks a month that you can um, have built. These YouTubers will have a like a Skype session with a group of people, and it'll That's be like a live cool. Q and A. So it actually is like you're actually getting like a pretty good service there uh, for a good deal. And a lot of these people are happy to pay. They're not. They're not. They're not like all suckers. They're not all like, kids stealing their credit cards. Well, I guess it pump, but depends the, like who your community is too. If you know means. what your demographic is, like yeah. Because a lot of this, there's YouTubers, uh, the example that I used before of uh, the YouTubers who were getting 25 grand a month uh, through Patreon, they are an educational channel. And so there's, you know, a benefit there is obvious. Yeah. It, it's it, it's like paying for a buck, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. You support it, you like it, you pay for it. Yeah. It depends how you do it again. Yeah, I think it is probably, uh, I would agree with that. I think it's pretty much accurate. I mean, sometimes you want to do a passion project and, you know, it's never going to get funded and people feel like they can be excited to kind of contributing to it, I guess. But it, there is all totally like that level of sleaze where it's like, hey, let's get these kids to uh, give us some money from their parents' credit cards. It's just yeah. totally how you design it. There's, there's so much creativity yeah. around how you design that campaign. You can, you can, I think that you can give back. Yeah, totally. Okay, one last question for real this time. Yeah, yeah, I've read, and I've read her book actually. It's a good book. Yeah, she's done well. She does, she has a very good point about the crowdfunding thing that it's kind of like a community thing, right? And uh, and yeah, like she'll tour and sleep on people's couches. She doesn't lean on them. Yeah. She doesn't, you know, coerce them. They're there. Yeah, yeah, it's the messaging. Okay, there was one other. Yes. <laughs> things like anything else you gotta stick it out for a year two three Ten. three months uh, January, start, make our way down the line. 
I would say just keep grinding. It took me um, at least two years before I could do it fully, and uh, you just have to keep on going. If you have that fire in your, in your belly, just you know keep trucking, keep going. Even if you have 17 views, it's still views, right? You have to grow from somewhere. Everyone here had zero subscribers, so have uh, you know I guess some inspiration from that. It it it'll come. You just have to keep working at it. I've always said to stay authentic and just, you know, if you really love it, keep doing it and um, that'll shine through. And as you get better and better, the cream will rise, rise to the top. And, you know, if, you, if you're not authentic, people can smell bullshit. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's always been my number one advice. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, just make sure it's something you like, that, you know, you want to do. Like, if even if you're... I remember the first time we broke 10,000 views, we were like, five digits, holy crap, we made it, quit our jobs, like, not actually, but uh, it, it's like, it's what your measure of success is, right, like, when we got 1,000 views for the first time, we are like, holy crap, we just made this video in like two hours, and like, had a ton of fun doing it, edited it together, threw it up on the internet, people enjoyed it, like, as long as we're being, as long as we're happy and we're making people laugh, like, that's, that's awesome. I think you hit it, like with the authenticity, just these kids can, I say kids because my audience is a little bit younger, but like people can smell bullshit and they're not going to want to watch someone that they're, they know is not enjoying themselves. So I think being consistent, being authentic, being excited and being personable and you know, the internet's a weird place. You're opening yourself up to a bunch of people. So I think the more open you could be and you know, genuine with your content, uh, I think it would be great. Um, I had ideas dating back to like 2010 where I should have done it. I should have started a YouTube channel back then and I probably would have a hell of a lot more subscribers than I do now. But that's the thing is that you're going to look at it now and go, man, it's 2016. I should have started this two years ago and you're always going to do that. So if you want to make videos, then you have to just start making videos and you have to start putting on content because it's not getting any easier to get noticed on YouTube. Thanks guys to our awesome panel for for hanging out.